So we're going to talk a little bit about mindset, actually the process of a great art practice, how to level up, because there's a certain thing almost nobody does, but the really high performers, the best in the world do it because they've been taught to do it. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that process. It's called a lot of things. Deep practice is one, uh, one common name for it. And it's a way to work through problems. You've got a problem. There's a way to work through it. And it's by paying attention to mistakes. And oftentimes in school, we're not allowed to do that because we're so worried about the, the uh, grade and the community liking what we do is we do the safe things and we do what works early on and we stick with that and we don't deal with our weaknesses because it's embarrassing. We won't get the scholarship, won't be in the uh, student gallery or in the real gallery. And so we hide that stuff and then it blocks our excellence. So there's a way to take that natural glass ceiling, that set point, as they sometimes call it, that we all put on ourselves or, or our environment puts on us and we can blast through that. So let me show you how that works. Max sounds excited. All right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Let's go over here. And make sure we're seeing good. Okay. So deep practice. Make sure we got everything working on both cameras. Let me call up my computer image. I'll draw a little bit as we're doing this, given the time. Deep practice. We want to bring real attention, consciousness to our mistakes. And by doing that, we hit resistance, of course, because it's a mistake. It's something we're not doing well, something we don't understand well. But by bringing attention to it and doing it in a safe way, in what I call the little wins, winning and losing, not winds like blowing winds, like storm winds, little wins process, we can work through any issue, no matter how big, a little baby step at a time, basically. In high performance fields, they call it 4% degree of difficulty, just 4% outside your comfort zone. This is my baseline level. I'm going to just go 4% beyond reaching 4%. I have to lean a little farther to get to it. It's a little bit out of balance, a little bit uncomfortable, slightly scary, but there's never a doubt that I can do it. 2% we get bored, 6% we actually get overwhelmed even world-class performance. Thing about 4% on 4% is we work through stepping up ever higher with no ceiling to our capabilities, really, as far as we know in terms of brain science. Very, very little, let's say. Um, we know that 4% on 4% is compound interest, and Einstein called that the eighth wonder of the world. Amazing things can happen when you're stacking 4% on top of 4% because now you're 104% of what you were, and now we're gonna do 4% of that, and so on. So it's an amazing thing, and we can keep building that way pretty much forever. And if we do it by little wins, attending to just one problem at a time, well, shoot, I can't render well, I make my legs too long, I use too much line, and it flattens my drawing, that's overwhelming. Pick one, we'll pick one problem at a time, and play with it and get better. And what happens when we put our attention to something we're not doing well, our conscious attention, and actually take steps to get better, uh, the neurons in our brain learn to fire quicker. They get wrapped with insulation like electric wire on the walls of your house. They, energy is not dissipated, but more force goes to that direction. They're more accurate. They fire faster and the repetition of those neurons firing because millions have to fire for any particular task speeds up. And so someone who's barely beginning to learn to draw, someone who's been drawing for years and years and is amazing like a Michelangelo say, 3,000 times better by any metric of that brain telling those muscles what to do. All the little things that have to happen to put the putt in the hole, to hit the home run, 
3,000 times better, 3,000 times more likely for that to happen than if, uh, if you don't build that wiring. And it all happens by bringing attention to mistakes. So let me double check, make sure everybody can see and hear. Good, we're all good. So that's our premise. We want to bring attention to the mistakes, and it can be anything. So I can't show you the reference because YouTube doesn't like nudes, even little pieces of nudes. But let's draw that rib cage. Now, if I draw it again, because it doesn't feel like I did it right, and just worry about the proportion of it, maybe. And then if I'm feeling the proportion, then work on the position. Maybe just a couple little problems. It could be the quality of the line. It could be that I'm making too many lines for a finished drawing. It could be uh, um, whatever. It could be um, how it's connecting one side of the rib cage to the other by way of the breastbone. I'm gonna pick one or two, whatever feels just barely out of my reach. So mainly I was worried about the fact that I made him too wide. And so I corrected that. And as I corrected that and it rang more true, now I've begun to wrap that neuron or set of neurons that allows me to make marks where I want, allows me to see the width in relationship to the length in the right relationship I want. And I'm suddenly smarter, incrementally smarter. And if I do that several times in an art practice and do that deep practice where I focus on my mistakes rather than just following the process to get better at the process, problem with that is if I study just that construction style at that academy that teaches construction style, I'm going to make massive progress in the beginning. Yay, that's good. But I'm also going to plateau out and then I'll be one of the best in the class and you won't be able to tell the difference between my best in class drawings or anybody else's best in class drawings, maybe even including the teacher's best in class drawings, which is still a massive win. But for some of us, we want to do more. We don't want to stop and then be after three hard years of working, draw the same drawings at the same rate to the same level of skill over and over for the next 40 years. We want to take it higher. And oftentimes to do that, we have to lead the old, leave the old process, find a brand new one. With deep practice, you never have to necessarily leave. You can keep getting better and better and better. So I'm going to look at that and try and make it better. Sometimes it'll be worse and I'll draw it again. Sometimes it's just right. I'll leave it. What will happen is as I put attention to the mistake, my hand-eye coordination increases, and over time, 4% by 4%, increases massively. I become very fluent, masterful in it. And at some point, I don't even think of the process. It just happens and comes out. And then I can focus on other things that I'm less fluent in, less masterful in, and bring them up to the same or similar level. Also, my eye my discernment, my understanding of what right, what true really is, and maybe my own version of true and not everybody else's in class, gets better and better and better. So I start to see the subtle mistakes I couldn't possibly have seen when I began a few months earlier. I start to see them as obvious and what would, would have been overwhelming to try and deal with at the time becomes fairly easy to quickly level up in a drawing or two, in a practice or two, maybe in a month or two, depending on the skill. So now I'm going to pick up that. And now because I took the time to focus on the mistake of too wide compared to not long enough or whatever, I corrected that. 
and was able to add another challenge on getting the position, better position. In this case, tilting, I decided was pretty good, but leaning back, whoops, leaning back into the page needed to be better. So I added those three dimensional constructions to make a better my view or maybe the genre I'm working in realist view of what was better. And then I begin again, draw it again or start building on that depending. Ideally, I pick a couple areas and just keep working. We're gonna draw a chunk of this figure just cause it's a fun thing to do. And I'm getting to use paper now, real paper, which I didn't get to use before. I'll just flash this real quick on the screen before I get kicked off by showing that. This has happened a couple times. And I noticed the, now the leaning position should be closer to a horizontal than what I drew it. So I make that correction. I focus on the mistakes and I fix it right in the drawing or ideally really doing it again. So you're creating your own how to. I draw the rib cage, I draw it again so it's more true. Now I add the arm on, I draw it again so it's more true. Now I draw it again so the, the connection between them is more true and so on and so forth. And then we just keep building idea by idea. I'm going to draw now the shadow on there. And then as I get more understanding, I'll draw it again, ideally in a brand new drawing. Notice what I'm doing is I'm trying to work with just a couple shapes, just a couple positions, just a couple values, just a couple edges, hard and soft edges maybe. Reduce it down to a variable, just one thing to work on, or two or maybe three, but not everything all at once. It's gotta be a better figure than that, Steve. I'm gonna draw the whole thing again, and it's still not right. Well, I got the proportions better, but I drew it in such a place that the feet went off the page. Now I gotta do it again. That's demoralizing, and it's not very efficient for leveling up. Chunk down. In music, what they'll do is they'll say, okay, honey, piano class, a good teacher will say, okay, go ahead and play that song. And they'll play six notes in. No, I'm sorry. Would you play those again? Six notes in. Oh, I'm sorry. Note four. Can we just play note four? Notice how the strategy is chunking down. Chunking down taking a fairly big problem, six notes, and eventually chunking down to just one of the notes. Okay, now that you got that fourth note, let's play the first four. That's better, let's do it again. That's better, and you stick with it till you make significant progress. It's not gonna be masterful probably if you're early in your journey, if you're early in overcoming that mistake, but you, Begin by bringing attention and you stop when you get some kind of little win. Sometimes you get massive wins, but some kind of little win. So I'm going to keep going here and I realize that the shadow should be a different shape in a different position. And even though it's adding more to it for time's sake, I'll make it a different value. Let me um, grab that. And I'll work it out. and I'll stick with it for as long as I have to until I get that right. And I'm gonna be learning 
as I go, a better and better, more and more sophisticated version of what right is. Thought I knew what it was, but as I get better at my craft, my right is righter, is more right. And that's one of the wonderful things about deep practice, because if we don't do that, if we just go through and do all the whole figure, we've got this very crude understanding of right because we can't really see what we need to see in the way we need to see it to see truly what that shape should be in powerful, dynamic, fluid, whatever our metric, beautiful relationship to the other things. step by step. If there's no friction, if we're feeling pretty good about it, maybe we keep going. But ideally, I'm going to put some practice time and you'll decide how much. Might just be so frustrating. I got, I'm starting and I got to stop. Oh, can't stand that. So maybe we don't put very much because it's no fun. It's painful. And that's going to keep me from actually doing what I love because I'm going to make what I love a chore when I want to make it a joy. So you, you learn to trust and know yourself. And you make then the choices about your practice that balance those factors. Just have some fun, for goodness sake. It's drawing. It's art. It should be a joy, not a chore. So then you adjust accordingly. And you keep working until working through the drawing with that little bit of ambition you had around that or beginning it again. And we keep, just keep going with patience and curiosity. And we begin again, making our choices evolving our understanding, fixing our mistakes. And also when I'm doing just a little bit of a problem, it's less demoralizing if I can't get it right. I'm less attached to it so I can be a little bit more curious and experimental and see if I can actually come up with a, a better right. Let's see here. Refine my understanding or my definition of what right is. And then what I probably want to do is consider some version some version, you know, it's still on the paper, of the 80-20 rule. And there's all sorts of ways to think of this. One of the things is there's going to be in any task, this is kind of the way the world, even the universe is constructed in a way. There's going to be 20% of things, of all the things you could do about figure drawing, about cleaning your house, 
about coming up with a uh, fusion generator to save the planet or whatever it is. There's going to be 20% of the, all the things you could do that will give you 80% of the results, get you 80% to the goal you're after. Do those first. Make those the top three things, maybe, out of the, the whatever it is, the uh, 15 things you could be doing. Do that first. That'll get you farther, faster. Those are going to be the biggest needle movers. And then we can think of the 80-20 rule in another way. Out of my practice, just love drawing the figure, and I love drawing the whole figure, maybe. But 20% of the time, every fifth drawing or every fifth practice session, every fifth page in my sketchbook, because 20% of the time, I'm going to work on deep practice. The rest of the time is too painful. It's no fun. I just want to play and create and see what happens without rules or processes. But 20% of the time, I'm going to chunk down, dial in, set myself up for little wins by focusing on the mistakes as they happen and stop and deal with it again. So doing that shadow again, I realized it was getting too lumpy, a little bit too much like a snowman, which is great for structure maybe, but it's lousy for gesture. Great for separating and, and uh, popping off the page and rendering out all those big forms. Terrible for the fluid, beautiful connection between the forms. So I realized I needed to soften the shadows and maybe as those shadows bump, let them bump towards the other side, move over towards the other side on the short axis, but then swing back down and flow into the long axis. And that's more beautiful, rings more true, whatever measurement of right I'm applying to it. So that's deep practice. There's all sorts of other things to it, but that's the, the secret sauce. That is the um, recipe for success for the best folks in the world. And what they do is they have fresh eyes on it because we can't always see our own mistakes. And that's why having a community where we can talk about it, where we can share with each other and such is so important because we need fresh eyes. We don't know what we don't know. And we have a real bias, we all do, about what we think we know and we don't want to hear any differently. And so having a safe space, a a think tank, a study group, a melting pot uh, of ideas where everybody can speak, there's not a bad idea, and then together we play with that idea, see if it's fruitful, see if it's not. That's the way to learn. And focusing on new ways to do the same old thing, focusing on a better definition of true and right, training up our eyes by seeing it through somebody else's eyes or having someone else kind enough to listen to our thoughts and give us feedback is the way, is the path. Because now we're leveraging other people's perception, other people's skill, other people's time, because they already worked it out so that we can save our own time, advance our own skill at a much quicker rate. We're in the age of democratized knowledge. Knowledge. We have access to almost everything we could ever want to have access to, but we need it curated by other people's experience, other people's trial and error, so we don't have to go through the same long process maybe. 
and other people's perceptions. And that takes community. That takes uh, maybe message, saying hi to each other in the chats and trying to connect in a safe way on a Discord or th on some chat site or whatever and getting support that way. Uh, so this is a little bit of that, but do more. Try and do more. Find places that work for you. And even if it's reading a book or watching a video, but especially if you can dialogue back and forth, um, that's immensely valuable because they're going to help you see your mistakes. And if they're a little farther along, or even if they're not, they'll be able to have some sense that there are mistakes that you may not have seen. Let me pop back up here. And so anyway, that, that's the opportunity. There's all sorts of bad things about social media, toxic culture, cancel culture, but there's so much good. People have so much knowledge that they're aching to share and for free usually. And so, so many people feel isolated in their passion. Reach out, take a risk and try and connect with people who care about what you care about in the way you care about it. And now all of a sudden, that glass ceiling, that set point that stops us all from achieving what we want in different areas, we see through their eyes and we can model their success or help them get up to our level and by doing that, get to a higher level ourselves by teaching we learn kind of idea. So that's the idea. Uh, that's my way of doing it. And the way I did it was by teaching. I'm making my mistakes at on you guys, and then you guys practice it and showing me what I should have done in the beginning to show you a better way. So th it's the constant dialogue that we get in these think tanks, whether you're student or teacher, you're really both. So find that as often as you can, and we'll keep doing these things as often as we can. I have no plans to stop. And then, of course, if you want to tell others so that they can share in this, so we can grow our community, grow our talent with other talented people and passionate people coming in to join us, we're only better for it. So please do that if you can. If you feel like it would help, join the Patreon channel. It's only uh, eight US dollars, which is a lot in some countries, I know. But um, it's there as a support for you guys. I put live streams and and homework and reference up there and all sorts of other things. I'll put it in here. And I also then have my uh, course. We just signed up somebody today. We signed up a couple of people uh, last two or three days. Actually, we signed up, I think, four people in the last three days, something like that. Um, and I'm happy to talk to you about if you're in a position in terms of time and uh, affluence of time and, and some cash, if you want to get more of a college experience, where you dive in and you get unlimited support. You get a lot of work with me one-on-one -on -one and in group situations. You can reach out to me on that.